Podcast. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Nicey Chunga Benny. I'm here with my co-host, Greg King. What's good, everybody? And you're listening to the Ball Fake Podcast. Welcome back to another episode. It's now episode 27. If you're new to our YouTube channel, make sure to like and subscribe, turn on post notification. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, make sure to give us a nice review. Um, quick disclaimer, shout out to our subscriber of the day, uh, Darian Ray. Appreciate you liking and subscribing and turning on all our post notifications. But as for today's video and slash episode, we're going to talk about Victor Oladipo turning down the $45.2 million extension that Houston offered him. Now, I'm going to have Greg start off with his thoughts and concerns on everything that, you know, has gone down with Victor Oladipo as of late with the Houston Rockets. Yeah. Greg, take it away. Yes, sir. So I was going to bring up today just are the Houston Rockets really dumb for making this move? You look at the trade, they got all the pick swaps, but they could have got a guy like Karis LeBert. Karis LeBert, without KD and without Kyrie this season, he averaged 31 points, nine assists, and five rebounds. Instead, they got a guy in Victor Oladipo who's injury prone. His his last best season was in 2017, 2018 season, where he averaged 23 points, five rebounds, four assists, shooting 47% from the field, and shooting his highest three point percentage, which was 37% from the three point line. So he was very effective in that 27 in that 2017 season but he hasn't shown that same productiveness since and it's really because of injuries and him not really just being on the court in general and a guy like victor he's not really a batman and he's not really a robin he's a guy who just brings that energy and brings brings a boy like he just really just a scorer like he's gonna hustle he's gonna come and be that guy for you but he's not gonna elevate your team more than that like i remember in 2017 because i am a pacers fan i remember in 2017 they went to game seven with the Cavs, and he really didn't elevate the pacers even though he played well he didn't elevate the pacers over that Cavs team and in 2019 20 and 2020 season they got swept by the miami heat so i mean he really hasn't done anything to really a guy who's asked for max dollars and wants to go to Miami really hasn't done anything to really solidify himself as a player that should deserve those dollars. And I'm not surprised that he turned it down because he doesn't want to be in Houston. He really wants to go to Miami. But yeah, I'm really disappointed in the Rockets because they could have had a guy like Karis LeVert, but they settled for a guy like Victor. And I just think for a team who's 11 and 22, I would try to at least try to get value out of Victor, but I don't know if he's worth a first round pick or a second round pick or even assets that even match his match his worth. But nicely, what you kind of thinking about how Houston really played their cards in this deal? Um, I mean, it's kind of give or take between Victor Oladipo and Karis LeVert. Victor Oladipo is obviously the better player, but I did state how like I feel like this was kind of a bad move on Houston's part. Yeah. When the whole James Harden trade situation went down. And I think they passed on Karis LeVert was it was because, you know, that injury. I I'm not sure what the injury was specifically. Uh that's my bad on that. But I think Victor Oladipo, he's he's not in he's not an all NBA caliber player. He is an all-star, all-star. type of player, borderline. And I feel like with that being said, Houston kind of wanted to take a chance on him and see if, you know, they could see if they can get something going with him. You know, see, test the waters a little bit. You know, they don't want to lose James Harden for nothing, essentially. Yes, you get a ton of picks. I think they got, what, eight picks. Three or four of them are going to be pick swaps. So that means they can only trade um, those picks while the draft is going on. But outside of that, I mean... Houston, they kind of, it, it will look like they kind of, you know what I'm saying, fuck themselves a little bit if, you know, Victor Oladipo walks in free agency. Exactly. And, and I actually just finished watching an interview um, with Victor Oladipo for the Houston Rockets uh, last night. And he kind of was discussing how he, it seemed like he felt like they offered it him, offered him the extension just to offer it to him. And he was saying how, oh, like, uh, yada, yada, yada. He didn't really feel like, they really wanted him they j- he just feel like they threw the money at him because you know they don't want to necessarily give up all what james harden j- essentially for nothing so i kind of yeah. feel like victor oladipo in a sense is feeling a little bit unappreciated seems like he he's feeling the fake love and everything um i mean they 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 came at me with the offer and it was more so along the lines of, we know you're not gonna accept it. So, but we we still, you know, want you to understand that we want you here. So it was more so of that gesture than anything. Um, 
and then go out of my way to ask or anything like that. Um, it was just kind of put in front of me or given to me um, to show me that they want me to be here. Um, I didn't get a chance to say yes or no. So um, they already were under the understanding or they knew that I wasn't going to accept it anyway. So, um, but you know, it's business. That's how the business works. Um, that's how this business works. And, uh, just focus on getting better, man. I got to get minutes. Um, and that's what I'm focused on doing is just playing and getting more minutes and everything else to take care of itself. I can't blame, you know, Houston for offering him $45.2 million. And honestly, in my opinion, I don't really think he's going to get the anything, you know what I'm saying, anything more significant than that. I mean, this is Victor Oladipo, he's a guy, he's not worth $30 million a year. He's injury yeah. prone. Um, at times, he can be inefficient. And like we're seeing right now, his play, it doesn't necessarily translate to wins. Okay. So I can't really see, you know what I'm saying, any team outside of, you know, teams like maybe the Knicks, trying to go out and get him because they're pushing for a playoff spot and you know they kind of want to solidify that they're coming making a comeback and everything but i mean I've, I've heard a few teams be in trade talks i mean possibly denver um denver that might be a decent spot but what do you have to give up you're gonna have yeah, to give up like, some young assets yeah, my, and some picks, yeah, yeah. and that's like my question. Stated, like you stated earlier, I don't think anybody's gonna be willing to give up a first or second round pick exactly. for a banged up, damaged goods Victor Oladipo. Exactly. My yeah, my piggyback off your off your comment. Yeah, are you willing to give up rotational players? Like I'm seeing that I'm seeing like five potential teams. I see the Hawks. I see. I see the Bulls. Like, are these teams willing to give up, you know, rotational players to make them to elevate them just into the playoffs? Like, I don't, I don't, I do not see that. And as okay, as far as Atlanta, I cannot see that working out whatsoever. I feel like he would essentially try to overshadow Trey Young just slightly, and he wouldn't be able to accept the, you know, what I'm saying the whatever role he would have to play in that organization. And as far as Chicago doesn't really make any sense you already have zach levine he's an all-star uh you kind of need and then on top of that they that's an organization they have six guards already i mean like yeah victor oladipo isn't gonna make much of a difference to be honest i mean you might get better offensively but so let's bring up the heat because he has he knows he wants to go to the heat. he keeps talking about the heat 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 what does he bring to the heat that really pushing them over the edge to really a roster without him went to the finals so how did how does adding Victor, Victor Oladipo make them even better or even worse? I think he brings consistent scoring. He would certainly make them better because what Victor Oladipo is offensively as a scorer is what everybody wants Jimmy Butler to be. Jimmy Butler, exactly. we all know he he defers a little bit to his teammates a little bit too much. Uh, he's It's like he's trying to play like LeBron James or something. No shade to Jimmy Butler at all, but Miami is in need of a consistent score they already built their roster around uh with guys like shooters and everything tyler hero duncan robinson uh you lose jay crowder a three and d guy and andre iguodala and kelly Olynyk. those guys they're they're very they're just you know they haven't been doing as well this season and you just you just need more help offensively i mean they played tyler hero out of position they were playing him at point Wingo. who the hell no what are they <laughs> doing with, what are they doing with kendrick nunn i mean it's just yeah. it's kind of it's been a little bit messy i know they've been dealing with um you know what i'm saying health and safety protocols and everything that's affected them to an extent but i think them the problem in miami offensively is that they don't really have that number one score yeah, and i think totally. victor oladipo coming in would help them obviously but i just can't see him getting a long-term contract with the miami heat yeah i don't i don't either I, but i definitely think he can fit in the culture he can come in like you said be a consistent scorer and really really take the pressure off of uh jimmy butler yeah and i mean like i stated earlier i mean if the knicks apply pressure and you know they they're able to you know swift their way into you know what i'm saying a bigger conversation with him and everything i feel like he could possibly go to new york even but, with I all mean, their guards that they have I mean, they don't really, it's not that they have a ton of guards, it's just that they have a ton of youth. And bringing in Oladipo could possibly hurt their development because, I mean, Derrick Rose, he's doing a good job of, you know what I'm saying, playing the field, playing his role, and, you know, making sure he's not getting in the way of those young guys like Alfred Payton, RJ Barrett, and all them, Julius Randle. So, 
adding a guy like Victor Oladipo, I mean, it's scary. But once again, like I said, I, don't, I can't see any team in free agency really offering him a big long term contract. And look, I don't want to say that he's going to stay in Houston. But mm -hmm. what I will say is I, most likely I feel like Victor Oladipo will probably be traded before yeah. the deadline. Or at least, so. or at least for Houston's sake, I hope they do that. Because yeah, I think Houston should. They should trade him. How are you gonna let him walk for nothing? That would be a bad look. A team that's eleven and twenty-two who can get even more assets for this incoming draft that's pretty, pretty loaded, top-heavy. So, I would definitely try to trade Victor. Right. But I mean, guys, thank you for tuning in to another episode. We're sorry about the, you know, the delays with the episodes and everything. We've been. We've been having to deal with a lot of stuff outside of the podcast and our schedules just haven't been matching up. But uh, we appreciate you guys tuning into another episode. It's now episode 27 of the Ball Fake Podcast. If you're new to our YouTube channel, make sure to like and subscribe and turn on post notification. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a nice little review. But outside of that, it's your boy, Nicey Chung and Vinny. I'm here with my co-host, Greg King. And we out. We out.